Today we're talking to St Albans City manager Ian Anderson when for the third time in a week we're playing a club pretty much down on the south coast, Haventon Waterlooville, challenging for the National League South title Ian. Um, at first five minutes and their 2-1 win, well they could have been three or four up and out of sight before we got going. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it, I don't know if we started the game slow or they started it extremely quick but they did take us a little bit by surprise and obviously we spoke about the way they play, I mean obviously with the pitch being as poor as it is here, I mean Lee apologised to me before the game but it, it suits their system. Um, they get the ball forward very, very quickly, they get it up to pride, they get bodies around them and before we knew where we was they've obviously picked up two second balls and we, they could have been tuning up in that first five minutes, as you say, but I thought we weathered it. We, I just felt we, when we got in front, we were just starting to dictate the game when we give a, a silly goal away in terms of allowing a cross into the box. It got a slight deflection and their fellas laying on the floor has hooked it in. And then again, I felt that it was quite even. I felt we, we just started to pick things up. I think the Harveys had a great chance to shoot at the top end and their bits on the counter-attack. And as I say, before we know where we are, I mean, it's a fantastic finish. I question why. He wasn't tight enough to, to allow him to get the sh shot in. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but <coughs> his turn and finish was outstanding. And, you know, as I say, I question our centre halves at the end of the day why we haven't got tighter. Because in the second half, we got a lot tighter, played further up the pitch, played a little bit forced to what we want to play, but it was effective. And I felt second half, there wasn't a lot between the two teams. No, it wasn't a great spectacle of the second half. But we did make a better fist of it, but it was too late. It was for uh, pretty much like Tuesday, we were chasing the game, and that's what's happened probably the last three or four weeks. You've seen it probably longer than that. You know, in some of the games we've come back and managed to get something out of it. Unfortunately, today we haven't. So, but you know, as I say, they're up there for a reason. Um, they're a good side. They've got some very, very good players. They've got a lot of experience in the side. As you see that in the last seven or eight minutes, how they how they rode the game out. But I felt we had opportunities in the second half, and, and probably the biggest the biggest changing point for me is the the decision the referee has made when he's overruled the. The linesman from giving us a penalty and sending their goalie off, and I think that was a massive decision. Changes the game, um, but unfortunately, you know, the referee has spoke to me. He said he will look at the video, and if he's wrong, he'll ring me Monday morning. But I really don't need. I'm going to turn my phone off Monday morning because he will be wrong. You'll show me that it was right. What happened? The linesman's clearly see it. Tom Bender's lip is bleeding. He's got blood all around his face and on his shirt. And the referee, what he did was was totally wrong. He should never overrule overall his linesman and he's just really abused his linesman at the end of the day and he shouldn't be doing that. Well hopefully the video's clear in but I can tell you we, we could hardly see a thing in that gantry in the second half as sun was blind and coming straight on the lens. <laughs> well, there you but go. we shall see anyway. Well, the linesman, the referee might get away with it then because as I say everybody in the crowd has seen it, even their players knew something had gone on, their players were just getting around making sure that the, they didn't do anything which was going to, you know, hindering what had gone on but everybody's seen it, everybody's seen it and the linesman has seen it, you don't flag and give a penalty and, and the keeper's got to be sent off if, if you don't do it and the linesman's decision and I can't see how the referee can overrule the linesman. It's silly having linesmen if you're not going to listen to what they've got to say. A change team and a change formation, you had a definite plan for today? It was a plan because I felt the state of the pitch at the end of the day, I don't think it was a pitch where we could get the ball down and play, um, it was one of them we had to try and match their, their strengths. Um, and I felt it worked for long periods, as I say, if you look at the second goal, it's probably, will he score a goal like this for the rest of the season? Probably not. But we, we put a lot of bodies in and around the midfield area. I felt we won a lot of the first and second balls in that midfield area. Unfortunately, I just felt we give too many set pieces away, too many free kicks, too many cheap free kicks today. In probably being a little bit over keen in trying to win every ball and we give some silly free kicks away. And as you see, the delivery on some of their set pieces was outstanding. It causes lots and lots of problems. And uh, you know we, we defended it well, but as I say, we just give you know for me important times today. We managed to get our noses in front, and but we just give silly goals away in really important times. Harvey Bradbury had a point to prove because his manager, is it, sorry, his father, his manager of haven't maybe it didn't quite work for him today. No, it's always going to be tough for Harvey. I mean, we, you know, we, we felt that it was one of them games we was always going to throw him in. It's always going to be tough for him playing against the, his hometown and uh, a, a team his dad manages. Um, but, you know, they played him really well, to be fair. He never really got an opportunity. I think he had, as I say, the best opportunity he had was just before they scored their second goal when the ball dropped him in the box and he hasn't managed to get his toe end on it. Um, and they broke straight away and scored the second goal. But, you know, lots of positives for me today, and especially in the second half. We kept going and going and going. But as you said there, it's unfortunate we're, we're chasing the game at the moment. And, you know, when the opportunity comes, Sam Merson gets in and, and he's got to pull it back for Zane. If he pulls it back for Zane, he's six yards out. Goalkeeper's out of position and hopefully he could go and get us an equaliser. But, you know, Sam's decision was to shoot. He had no angle to shoot. And they're the little things that are letting us down at the moment. 
you know, the, the big decisions, we're actually getting them wrong. Um, we've got to learn fast and quick and, and, and make sure the big decisions are our way. And if we do get in front, that we manage to see the game out. But as I said before, we've got three games to go. It's purely in our hands at the end of the day. We've got to try and make sure we win the last three games. The, the atmosphere in the change room is, is quite good. We're a little bit disappointed, but the players, are, you know, they, they know they've put a good shift in today against the top team. Um, and, and a bit unfortunate in the end, we didn't come away with something late on, but we, we'd already undone ourselves in the first half. We're talking of chasing that game. We're now chasing a playoff position. Uh, three o'clock last Saturday, we look odds on to finish in the top seven. Now three straight defeats. We're just two points above the eighth plus eighth place club, and they've got a game in hand. It's a lot tighter. Yeah, it is a lot tighter, but we've got Haven to play next week. Um, Hampton. Uh, sorry, Hampton to play next week. We've got, um, you know, all the teams are playing each other. I think Haven played Chelmsford next week. I think Braintree have got Truro and Whitehawk. And I think, you know, so there's lots of things going on. You know, we, we, we've just got to remain focused on what we're trying to do. I can't worry about what the other teams are doing. I have to concentrate on what we're doing. You know, we have to go to Gloucester on, on Tuesday and try and pick up three points. And that's going to be a really tough game because... They're a good side. We watched them at Wheelstone the other week, and since then they've only probably lost one or two games. So it's going to be a tough, tough game. We've got to make sure that we try and pick up something at least there, and then we've got to try and get three points in two of the next three games. And you know we've got to try and get six points out of those three games. So we've got to remain positive. We've got to just make sure we try and do the, the right things at the right times. But you know we can't keep chasing games like again we've had to do today. But you know lots of positives in the second half. So I felt we took the, to the game then. We had some opportunities and. And as I say, just um, some decisions you, I've got to go with you. And, and unfortunately, the decision on Tuesday night went with us, but we missed a penalty today. The decision hasn't gone with us. From what you said, Varian, it sounds like you might revert to a couple of wingers on Tuesday. Well, I have to look at what the, the pitch is like. Obviously, we're going to, to Evesham. So, again, with the way the pitch is today, you know, there's no way we could have played any football here, as I said to you there. You watch the way haven't play and haven't. I don't think they, they don't roll it out to any of their forwards. The goalie don't throw it out. He kicks it as far as he can. His centre half kicks it as far as they can. And once we did that in the second half and realised how bad the pitch was, we actually got in the game and they started making mistakes. We started to give the ball away. Well, they started to give the ball away in the final third. We started to get the long throw and throw that in the box. So this, this took us a long time again to realise that we can't go and play football in every single game. It's not in August, it's not September, the pitches are fantastic. This is now late April, pitches are poor and, and, and Lee Bradbury, as I said, apologised to me before the game. He knows how poor this pitch is, that's why he plays the way he does. But they, it's effective for the way they play it, so we have to get on with it. We're not going to have perfect pitches at this stage of the season. When we get back to August again, it'll probably be better again. And that's where we've got to start, obviously, playing our football with them. But at this stage, we've got to learn how to win some games playing ugly. Lovely, thanks so much Ian, and fingers crossed for a return to winning ways on Tuesday. So Thank Tuesday night Saints back in National League South action, away to Gloucester Monday. City at Eastham United's ground. Kick-off at Cheltenham Road is at 7.45pm.